Our Across the Aisle segment tonight. Earlier this week, news broke that former National Security Advisor Susan Rice was the one who directed the unmasking of Trump transition team officials. CNN is refusing to cover the story, saying there is no evidence Rice did anything criminal. But this is the same network that has speculated for weeks about illegal ties between Russia and the Trump administration, even though there's no evidence of that. This is Don Lemon's stance. The Washington Post today calls the latest claims about Susan Rice anatomy of a fake scandal ginned up by right-wing media and Trump. So let us be very clear about this. There is no evidence whatsoever that the Trump team surveilled or spied on, was, was spied on illegally. There is no evidence that backs up the president's original claim. And on this program tonight, we will not insult your intelligence by pretending otherwise, nor will we aid and abet the people who are trying to misinform you, the American people, by creating a diversion. With me now, professor and author of Obama's America, a transformative vision of our national identity, Ian Reifowitz. Ian, friend, how you doing? Good, good. Always good to see you, Liz. It's good to have you here. Ian, let me ask you something. This is a rhetorical uh, change up, flip flop that I noticed in the past week or so in Democrats rhetoric when they're talking about the Susan Rice story or talking about Trump's uh, allegations on Twitter that he was wiretapped by President Obama. At first they were saying that no, Trump was never spied on. There's no evidence that he was spied on. Now they're saying there's no evidence that he was spied on uh, illegally. That's a pretty significant difference. Well, let's start by saying that um, if we're going to count the times in which Republicans and Democrats say the opposite thing uh, when the shoe is on the other foot, I think we'll be doing a lot of counting. But I do want to obviously deal with this specific question because it's an important one. Uh, Donald Trump claimed that he was wiretapped by the Obama administration. The media went into a frenzy investigating uh, or running stories about whether this was possibly true or uh, even though Trump didn't present any evidence, but that's fine. Then the FBI director said it didn't happen. Uh, Michael Hayden, who, uh, who is uh, the uh, a former NSA director, said it didn't happen. Um, it didn't happen. Now we have something else. And I think the media is rightfully a bit cautious about simply running with the story in the same way that it ran with the previous story. So uh, Don Lemon is, is one media figure, uh, but there are others in the media, including uh, former NSA director Hayden, who are, are, who are not journalists, who are not opinionators, and who have said very clearly that what Susan Rice did was totally within uh, what she was supposed to be doing. It's part of her job. When we're talking about unmasked... Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. Because it's remarkable to me, honestly, that the media is not investigating the story. It's fine to withhold opinion or to withhold a conclusion until you've investigated the facts. Certainly the media needs to do more, uh, do that more often than they do. They jump to a conclusion immediately based off of their political bias. They don't investigate the facts. I cannot believe they're not investigating this. This could be as huge as Watergate. But Ian, let me ask you. You say what Susan Rice is doing is legal. If this had been done by... President Bush's national security advisor in the interim between the election of President Obama and the inauguration of President Obama, would that have been no big deal to you? It would have been very important. Do you know why? Because if they had been doing that to President Obama, that would have meant that the, the National Security Agency and other intelligence agencies had reason to believe that President Obama and his team were doing something illegal and that they needed to this look had into nothing, it. This had nothing to do with Russia. They already said that. Congressman Nunes said that Susan Rice's activity, this allegation that there was a detailed spreadsheet, that these uh, American citizens' names were unmasked in intel reports, these conversations, this uh, surveillance of the foreign targets, it had nothing to do with the investigation of collusion between Trump and Russia. Well, first of all, I'm not sure I would take anything Chairman Nunes says seriously, given what's happened with him over the last week. But I would go back to what Michael Hayden said. Michael Hayden said, excuse me, quote, uh, the, um, excuse me, quote, that in Trump that what Trump was doing is, quote, the equivalent of trying to criminalize, criminalize intelligence judgment. Remember, unmasking a name doesn't mean leaking a name. Unmasking a name means that she got a report from the intelligence officers saying that something was picked up and an American citizen's conversations were picked up. She then says, I need to know who that name is for national security reasons. Then the, national, then the agency that created the intelligence can say, no, you don't. Or they can say, yes, they can. And Michael Hayden talked about the two-pronged test for that. So the fact is that they gave her right. the names because they agreed that she needed them. She didn't leak them to the media, so there is no investigation. No, no, they, they, don't, they don't get to agree whether she needs them or not. There, there, is, there is some stipulations about whether or not. But, Ian, you're missing the point here. I mean, she perhaps used a loophole. That perhaps is technically true, that she's allowed to request the unmasking of names. But when you look at what happened, when you look at the fact that she logged all these requests to unmask the names of U.S. persons who should, their privacy should have been respected. I mean, you're a liberal. You know this. You're not supposed to like, you're not supposed to like when government surveils you. When their privacy was violated, 
violated. And then after that, the Obama administration lowered the classification level for people within the intelligence community who were allowed to see the names of these unmasked people. That's a violation of the spirit of the law, and you know that. It's violating the spirit of the law because that makes it more likely that these leaks would happen. Do you know how many people were unmasked, quote unquote, in, the, in, in a given year? Just 2013, okay? There were 10,000 people whose names were unmasked in these intelligence reports. This is what intelligence officers do. This is what national security officers do. The only possible crime that Susan Rice could have committed was to have leaked these names outside the White House. There is no evidence that she did that. There's no way to investigate whether she did that other than asking her. Uh, the names were, were not, in fact, the name of, according to the Wall Street Journal, other than Michael Flynn, which his name was not unmasked by, by Susan Rice, according to the Wall Street Journal report, the other name is still unknown outside, of, outside of, uh, of the Obama administration and the intelligence communities. So these names have not gotten out there. Ian, th this, is, this is absolutely shocking to me. This is absolutely shocking to me that this does not bother you. I mean, when there's the overreach, when there's the abuse of surveillance in our government, that puts your privacy and my privacy at risk here. When the, when the intelligence communities or intelligence is weaponized, do you know how dangerous that is? You say there's no proof that Susan Rice did anything wrong. You say that this wouldn't have happened because the Bush administration wasn't investigating anything about the Obama administration, so that would have bothered you different. That double standard, double standard is mind-boggling. But if this were going on for an entire year, if Susan Rice was unmasking these names for an entire year and they found anything that would have pointed to the fact that the Trump administration or any of his associates were doing something wrong. Don't you think we would have heard about that? I think the investigation there is ongoing and there's a lot of evidence, obviously, that the FBI thinks that there's something to look into. What, what evidence? What evidence? Have they released it yet? You'd be aware of it and so, and so would I. You're not, the FBI is not supposed to comment on ongoing investigations. We're, at least they're not supposed to do that uh, if it's, it's somebody who's not named Hillary Clinton. Look. If the FBI finds that Susan Rice did something wrong, great, throw her in jail, you know, say that she committed whatever crime she did. But we're, we reached a point where if Donald Trump hears about something from some right wing blogger and then says this happened, like Susan Rice committed a crime, all of a sudden is the media supposed no, to go. Uh, no, no, I, I have to I have respectfully I have to completely disagree. I mean, you have a comp you have a double standard. You think that you have evidence to prove that Trump colluded with Russia. There's no evidence whatsoever. And I say that not from a partisan standpoint, because Republican or Democrat, if a president is colluding with a foreign nation to hack his opponent, that's wrong and they should be held accountable to that. I don't care who I voted for. That makes no difference. But then Susan Rice, when we see that she did this for no other earthly reason than to know what the Trump administration was going to do once they took office, she's weaponizing that for political purposes and you claim that there's no evidence of wrongdoing. It's absolutely mind boggling to me. And Ian, they are yelling at me in my ear already. We'll have to pick this up uh, next week, but I appreciate you being here. <laughs>